A short while ago, NASA announced that it would be adding Blue Origin's new Glenn to its roster of commercial vehicles for flights in the mid-2020s. A newly signed contract means that new Glenn will be added to the list of commercial launch vehicles that would be able to carry NASA payloads to space. Today on Super Freaky Science, we'll be looking at what this means for commercial launches going forward, and we'll be going through the rundown of the commercial launch vehicles that new Glenn may have to contend with to get a NASA contract. In December 2020, NASA announced that it would add new Glenn to its roster of launch vehicles. This addition didn't come as a surprise to anyone because New Glenn fit the bill of the kind of commercial launch vehicle that NASA has on its roster. This won't be the first Blue Origin launcher to be added to NASA's roster either. The agency already flies payloads on the New Shepard, which is Blue Origin's suborbital vehicle. The New Glenn isn't the New Shepard though. New Glenn is an orbital launcher that is designed to reuse its boosters. Bezos has also said that he hopes New Glenn will be able to fly cargo as well as human beings. If you're wondering about the name of the New Glenn, well, wonder no more. Like the New Shepard, it was first named after the first American in space, Alan Shepard. The New Glenn was also named after an astronaut. The astronaut in question is John Glenn, the first American to orbit the Earth. The new Glenn is several steps forward from the new Shepard. It has more bulkiness, more range and, most importantly, will be able to fly payloads past low Earth orbit. According to Blue Origin, the new award was just built on Blue Origin's existing partnership with NASA. Now, there's a caveat. This contract doesn't mean that NASA must necessarily launch anything on New Glenn. The entire contract could run out without New Glenn going on any missions for NASA. The contract only guarantees that Blue Origin can compete for NASA contracts under NASA Launch Service 2, which is applicable for launches through to December 2027. The New Glenn Specifications the New Glenn is a rather large rocket, even when compared to its peers like Delta IV Heavy and the Falcon Heavy. The only launcher bigger than it is the Saturn V launcher. The entire thing is about 23 feet in diameter and lifts off with 3.85 million pounds of thrust from seven BE-4 engines. The rocket stands about 313 feet tall and has a lift capacity of about 14 tonnes to geostationary orbit and about 50 tonnes to low Earth orbit. It has a unique payload fairing, which is about 23 feet wide. That will allow it to launch lots of different kinds of payloads. After the launch, the rocket's reusable first stage booster will touch down on a waiting ocean platform. Blue Origin says that the new Glenn is designed to fly about 25 times, and it says that the first stage of the rocket will be reusable for about 100 launches. The rocket will land vertically, and this should be no problem as the tech has been developed by Blue Origin and tested in 2015 and 2016 on its new Shepard suborbital launch vehicle. The new Glenn will make use of hydrogen oxygen as a propellant and will be expendable. Now, here's the tricky part. The new Glenn hasn't had its first flight. Blue Origin is hoping that it would be possible in 2021, even though the design of the rocket is already settled and much of the proof of concept has already been done. It hasn't yet had its time in the sun. Would an untested rocket like this be able to outbid tested rockets like the Falcon 9 for NASA projects? Well, we have no idea. But we'll certainly be able to find out in the coming years. Launch Services Blue Origin will offer both single payload dedicated flights and after the fifth launch, it will start offering dual manifesting of large commitments to be transported to geostationary transfer orbit. 
All contracted launches from the start will make use of a reusable first stage. By 2018, when the new Glen was still in development, Blue Origin already had four customers in place. Right now, three of these companies have launches planned for after 2020, and they already have an agreement with OneWeb for five launches. In 2019, Blue Orbit got its fifth customer. The customer was Telesat, and they signed a multi-launch contract to launch satellites into its future low Earth orbit broadband constellation on multiple New Glenn missions. Blue Origin have said that they are looking to contract New Glenn a bit differently from the way launch services are usually offered in the commercial launch market. The company has said that they will be looking to have a regular launch cadence of up to five times a year. For example, if one of the payload providers for a multiple payload launch isn't ready on time, Blue Origin will hold on to the launch timeframe and will launch the remaining payload on time. New Glenn Funding As expected, the New Glenn project will be funded by Jeff Bezos. But Bezos isn't the only one behind the New Glenn. The Department of the Air Force has also heavily invested in the rocket. The entire project was initially founded by Bezos, but after 2019, the project received about $500 million in funding from the United States Space Force NSSL program. As of 2017, Bezos had invested close to $2.5 billion in New Glenn. If you're enjoying this video, please give this video a like, and also, don't be shy, leave us a comment, we love to hear from you. Now, moving on. Blue Origin and NASA Further Partnership The addition of the new Glenn to NASA's roster of commercial launch vehicles isn't the only front that Blue Origin and NASA will be working on. For one, the company has developed what it calls a robotic Blue Moon Lander. The Blue Moon Lander is essentially a relatively large lunar lander that's designed to deliver science payloads, moon rovers, and even astronauts to the lunar surface. The spacecraft may also be able to deploy small satellites into lunar orbits as a bonus mission on the way to the moon. The Blue Moon Lander looks a lot like the Apollo lunar modules, however, there are a few differences. For one, it's sleeker than the Apollo Lunar Modules. The best way to describe its sleekness is to imagine that it was made by Apple instead of Blue Origin. But that's not the only difference between the Blue Moon Lander and the Apollo Lunar Modules. There's also the matter of the enormous spherical fuel tank with the words Blue Moon printed in big blue letters on the side. So, you know, there's that. The lander also has a smaller landing pad. The main reason why the Apollo lunar module has large ladders is that the engineers were worried that the lunar soil would be too thick and that it would sink too far into the ground. But as we know now, they were quite wrong. So Blue Origin switched things off by giving the lander smaller landing pads. The last and perhaps biggest the difference between the Apollo Lunar Modules and the Blue Moon Lander is that the Apollo Lunar Module was made for human missions to the surface of the Moon. The Blue Moon Lander is fully autonomous, robotic spacecraft with built-in mechanisms for dropping off science gear, including lunar rovers. That's it guys, if you enjoyed this video make sure to smash the like and subscribe buttons to get more Super Freaky Science content on Super Freaky Science. Goodbye and remember to stay safe.